the Dauntless. To be honest, I expected these earlier, Admiral Cistern remarks as he overlooks the designs of the many, many different styles of space stations that had been handed to him in an overstuffed folder with a USB drive taped to the side. Apologies, sir. Everyone we tapped in to help went off on their own tangents, and before we realized what was going on, we had 50 designs rather than 5 designs with 10 people at the helm. Everyone's interested and you'll see more than a few designs from popular science fiction. If I hear one more Star Trek joke, Agent O'Brien mutters before sighing. Apologies, sir. I've been bombarded with the same joke until it became tedious at best. You should hear all the Shodan cracks for being named Janet Polito. The good doctor remarks and Agent O'Brien chuckles. Fair enough, ma'am, he says politely as Admiral Cistern allows only a tight smile. Very well. I do hope you've cobbled together something exceptional with the additional time you've taken the liberty of awarding yourselves. Apologies, sir. Agent O'Brien says somewhat nervously. We'll skip the disciplinary actions this time, Agent and Doctor. This time. I'm rather eager to get to the results. Thank you, sir. Now, as to our final design, it's on the very top as is only appropriate. You'll notice that it's in fact two designs, both wildly different but of incredible potential. I'm seeing two wheel-like structures designed to rotate in a vacuum. Hardly revolutionary. Admiral Cistern remarks as he scans the rough blueprints. They work in tandem, sir. Powerful magnets and basic rail systems can be used to launch and catch shuttles into and out of cruel space in order to facilitate the movement of goods and people with a minimum of fuss. With some fine tuning, we could have these structures so close to one another that it would be a simple matter to shuttle people from the first station to the second without any Axiom-based technology. These would function as a two-step last-stop system for leaving cruel space. With these small controlled shuttles, we can stop anything stupid like a stowaway getting themselves killed with null exposure and maintain a steady stream. Think of it like a bus or bullet train system, Dr. Polito explains and Admiral Sister nods. From the looks of it, you think the idea of having numerous such stations and travel between each one being a primary goal. One dedicated to mining, one to commerce, another to residential areas, training, and other such things. A city in space, sir. Each station a district by itself rather than a singular massive construct. It also means that there are several layers of redundancies as each station will have some bare essentials, allowing it to subsist alone. Effectively, each one will be perfectly functional alone and massively more efficient as a unit, Agent O'Brien explains, and Admiral Sister nods before frowning somewhat. That leaves a fairly large weakness in the form of the shuttles themselves. It's a good idea, allowing for modular void-based habitation and construction, However, an offensive force can do ruinous damage to the community if they target these shuttle lanes. How do you propose to get around that? Admiral Cistern asks. Sir? His desk comm goes off. He presses the button to let them know he's listening. Speaker incoming. Oh dear, I advise you both to stand aside. Hurricane Ticanped is a feathery menace. Generally, the bookcases are at a safe distance. Admiral Cistern advises the two as he closes the folder and sets it aside. Agent O'Brien and Dr. Polito quickly back away just in time to avoid the... Lady Tycanped does not charge in but rather stands in the doorway. Grand Admiral Garfield Cistern, first of the undaunted, she announces dramatically and receives only a mildly raised eyebrow in response. Lady Jacqueline Tycanped, Speaker of the Council. He returns and her tail puffs out as a cascade of white feathers. Why are you here, interrupting a meeting with my subordinates? I am. Wait, what? Lady Tycanped cuts herself off and leans into the room to see O'Brien and Polito staring back at her. I wasn't told about a meeting. You ignored everything I said as you puffed yourself up and preened before opening the door, Admiral Cistern's secretary protests. 
Um, yes, yes, I did, she remarks with surprising humility. This piques Admiral Cistern's curiosity. This is a rapid shift in behavior if there ever was one. He turns it over in his mind and lands on trooper and nerd squad member Amadi Adagok and his relationship to Lady Tycanped's cousin, Miss Abigail Tycanped. What is this about Madam? Admiral Cistern asks politely. I understand that with you humans, you usually have the men ask for the woman's hand in marriage. However, as I hear highly doubt you will ever ask for mine, I am asking for yours instead. Lady Tykenped says grandly, Excuse me, I am asking you to marry me. I understand that marriage means something different for humans. However, I am asking for a more pavorous style marriage. I don't expect your love. I don't expect anything from you aside from the right to claim that we are married and to help me in the mothering of my children. If anything happens to dissolve the marriage, the fault will automatically be considered. Lady Tyconped's explanation pitch is interrupted by Admiral Cistern raising his hand for silence. Madam, while I understand that the marriages of Centris are practical for the galaxy at large, and are in fact a continuation of very common practices that most races perform. I'm afraid that there is an enormous culture clash occurring. Not only have I not entered any form of centrist marriage, but none of my men have or likely will. He explains and Lady Tycanped looks dejected for a moment. We prefer more passion and affection in our marriages. What you have proposed to me is more akin to forming a clan with a single male participant as the hub around which the entire social structure turns. Such a thing is not overly disagreeable, however. It is not a marriage as nearly any human alive would consider it. So you accept, she asks. If my first wife will agree, then we shall try. Admiral Cistern remarks and Lady Tycanped looks shocked before her mind visibly races. Ambassador Nictatal of Brule. Hmm. Very well. Lady Tycanped muses. Excuse me. I need to make a call. With that, she leaves the doorway and Admiral Cistern watches her fetch her personal communicator out of her cleavage as the door closes. That was unexpected, Agent O'Brien remarks and Admiral Cistern shakes his head. Am I missing something, sir? Lady Tycanped is a pavorous. Once she sets her mind to something, then there is little, if anything, she won't do to achieve it. It appears that she considers being wed to me her next main goal, which means she will be both persistent and shameless in her wooing of me. I have little doubt she will achieve what she wants, however. If it takes the form, she imagines I will be most surprised. Much like her political career, I imagine, Dr. Polito says with a bit of a smirk. Indeed, she'll find being in a relationship with a human man to be a bit more work than she expected. Greater work, greater reward, sir, Agent O'Brien says blandly before holding up a finger. The door opens again and Lady Tycanped struts into the room with an enormous smile. Your wife would like to speak with you, hubby. She coos as she holds out her gilded communicator to Admiral Cistern. He holds it up and then brings up his own to transfer the call over to his system, a trick that had taken an irritatingly long time for Philip to teach him. From his communicator, he places things into projection mode and a holographic representation of Nikta appears. So she is right there with you. How interesting, Ambassador Tal says. While I understand that there is no form of ceremony for such things, this still seems rather... Admiral Cistern is cut off by a coffee being placed to his side by Sir Philip, who had pointedly not been there moments prior. Thank you, Philip. It's fine. I've already accepted a few concessions from her and told her exactly how she's going to behave like this. After all, all three of us are very busy, very important people. While it would be nice to indulge every now and again, we must put our duties first. The burden of command. Ambassador Tal explains as Admiral Cistern takes a sip of the steaming hot drink and thinks. This is good, but still something he struggles to grow used to. Yes, 
Effectively seducing and marrying the Speaker of the Council is politically a slam dunk. Her power may be ceremonial almost exclusively, but power is power and should not be scoffed at. Regardless, the idea of having to do so himself, he buries that thought before it can fully form. The leader that would issue commands they themselves are unwilling to perform is a poor one indeed. Very well, I appear to have been argued into a corner, but I wish one thing to be clear with you, madam. And that would be? Lady Tycanped asks with a sultry look over Admiral Cistern. Not a single one of us is going to be some simple trophy, nor a status symbol. This is a partnership of equals. We are each and all expected to behave with decorum and for the betterment of our peoples. Be you of Bruel, of Centris, or of the Undaunted, Admiral Cistern says, and Lady Tycanped looks somewhat surprised before smiling. Agreed, however, I would also like to stipulate that you should consider a revitalizing coma. I do like the matured aesthetic you have going, but if you are brought low by something so very easily countered and contained, it would be most unfortunate. If this relationship with myself, yourself and Ambassador Tal is to last, then it must be allowed to last and truly last in a practical scale and not the primitive short lives that your people have been regretfully subjected to. Very well, now I don't wish to be rude, my dear. However, I was in the middle of a meeting with Agent O'Brien and Dr. Polito when you arrived. If you don't mind, Admiral Cistern asks, perhaps the madam would care to see your quarters, sir. If she's going to be a common sight on the Dauntless, then it would behoove her to have an understanding of the ship and its layout. Sir Philip offers and Admiral Sister nods. An excellent idea. I do need to go over these blueprints further. Admiral Sister says, gesturing towards the folder. And before he can say anything else, Lady Tacanped grabs it and glances inside. He takes a sip of the steaming hot coffee so as not to say something he might regret, although there is a definite twitch around the eyes. Oh, a transit system between multiple space installations. Interesting, it will certainly serve as excellent training and employment for a great many beginner pilots just getting used to flying in a vacuum, she says, and Admiral Cistern pauses and considers. She has knowledge of value in this regard? Interesting. It will indeed. What Agent O'Brien and Dr. Polito have been proposing is designs for the stations nearest to cruel space to maximize the protection of those within and without the phenomenon and facilitate the emigration of my people from the home world. Do you have anything to suggest to what you see, madam? Sir Philip asks, and Lady Tycanped quickly flips through the papers and scans them at a blurring speed. O'Brien and Polito give each other a glance as the mental image of the bimbo that wormed her way into a position she couldn't possibly deserve takes a hit. Communication, construction, residential, manufacture, refining, mining, transportation, training. None of these space station designs have a dedicated area for diplomatic talks, something many, many peoples will be clamoring for, and it may even be seen as a form of insult if no such embassy stations are on offer. You're also missing luxury recreation, although that could be folded into the recreational station design. She muses out loud, you could work a large indoor garden as part of the hydroponics in the luxury station to both help with the atmosphere and with the food production for more exotic or perhaps less exotic fare. Color me impressed, Lady Tycan Ped. I had no idea you held such interests, Sir Philip notes. Oh, it's nothing, just a hobby at times. Lady Tycanped waves it off and Admiral Cistern hides a slight smile behind another sip of coffee. Perhaps this will not be an onerous addition to his duties.